This video series explains the neuroscience of reading and dyslexia. This series is for anyone who cares about these topics, such as parents, teachers, policymakers, and people with dyslexia. No prior knowledge of neuroscience is required. Reading is vital in today's society. However, the brain did not evolve for reading. Reading makes use of the brain's language system, which evolved for face-to-face -face spoken communication, and the brain's visual system, which evolved for recognition of people, animals, and things on the African savanna. We will see that reading places unusual demands on these systems, which change together in particular ways to support reading. Dyslexia occurs when these brain systems cannot adapt for reading in the usual way. Here's the game plan for the series. In the rest of this introduction, we'll cover some neuroscience basics. Next, we'll look at brain areas that support speech and vision. Then we'll examine the new functions that these areas take on when kids learn to read. Next, we'll consider what goes wrong in dyslexia. Finally, we'll talk about remediation for dyslexia. So let's get started with some neuroscience. Here we're looking at the left half, or hemisphere, of the brain. This hemisphere specializes in language and reading, so we will concentrate on it. The front, or anterior, part of the brain is on this side, and the back, or posterior, part on this side. The outer layer of the brain is called the cortex. The cortex is where high-level processing occurs, so our focus will be on it. The brain is composed of connected cells called neurons. A neuron is tuned to a particular thing and fires rapidly when that thing is present. For example, a neuron tuned to the shape of a mouth fires when you see a mouth. We will say that a rapidly firing neuron is activated. Neural activity is a representation inside the brain of the world outside the brain. Tuning begins at the sensory organs that provide the input to the brain, such as the eyes and ears. A neuron's tuning comes from the connections it receives from other neurons. For example, assume that these neurons are tuned to different parts of faces. A neuron that receives connections from them is therefore tuned to an entire face. When neurons fire, they help connected neurons to fire. For example, when the face part neurons are activated together, they cause the face neuron to fire. Within a cortical area, neurons are tuned to related things. For example, in this cortical area, some neurons are tuned to the shape of mouths, some to eyes, some to noses, etc. So this area represents face parts. To summarize, the take home message of this segment is that neurons and cortical areas are tuned to represent particular types of things, such as faces and face parts. In the upcoming videos, we will look at the tuning of other cortical areas. This concludes our introduction to the basics.